Okay, we're here, we're live, yay! <laughs> well, um, let's see here. I think we are waiting on people. Yes, this seems a little odd. I say welcome everyone. Thank you all for being here. This is Magical Monday. <laughs> if, if, if you know those uh, those truck rallies where they say, you know, they say something and it echoes like like magic, magic, magic Monday, Monday, Monday. Uh, <laughs> it's not the truck yeah. rally, but it's Magic Monday. That's <laughs> what we all are celebrating, right? Yeah, maybe we need maybe we need an intro card that does that. Welcome there you go. to Magic Monday. <laughs> Monday, Monday, <Thanks>. Monday. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh -huh. yes. I think so. Okay. I think so. And yeah, Akila oh, is here. Breath. Thank you for being here. Yeah. So nice to see you. It's so nice to see everybody. Thank you all for being here. And um Terry Suzuki, I was just telling her backstage, everybody, she was, uh, she's, she's a trooper. She was on Saturday. She was on Sunday. She was on Monday. So if you haven't seen her on the prone zone, she did the Terry's Tales. And on Sunday, she was on with uh, Allie from Heart and Soul Connected. And she was the featured psychic medium. And what an amazing uh, show that was as well. So, and then we have her today and then again tomorrow. And yeah. did you want to tell us a little bit about the show tomorrow? Yes. Uh, thank you, Jean, for, for such a nice compliment. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be on a lot recently. So tomorrow is my um, Akashic Healing Series. And uh, we have a new focus. Uh, you know, they, they don't tell me the focus until a couple days ahead of time. And then... Uh, even that, once they tell me the focus, they wait till the day of to then tell me exactly how the healing's going to happen, what's going to go on. And so this week, tomorrow, it is about jealousy. They're going to mm. heal jealousy of all kinds, you know, because jealousy is generally a large thing, but it can happen in small and large ways. And um, that will... I think that will be lovely. And um, I hope everybody knows that it's not like I've already had all these things healed. I personally have not always. So so a lot of times when we're reading this, I'm getting the healing too. So, <laughs> yeah. That's it does. Really it exciting. does. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, Joan, what are you up to recently? Well, I have not been around a lot lately. I... Um, uh, have been involved with, there's been family stuff going on. And, mm -hmm. but things are uh, getting kind of cleared up. So I'm hoping to show my face a little bit, a little bit more in the coming weeks. So I really appreciate you having me on. And uh, even though I'm not as active as I had been, um, I just love reading with you guys. It's really fun. Yeah. Well, we love reading with you. And uh, I love it that you can pop on and, and be with us. Mm -hmm. And um, Jean, what are you up to right now? What are you? Well, I have a, I've just completed a, a, a huge challenge that I put out for myself. I did an out of town, out of state uh, ah. two day psychic fair this past weekend on Saturday and Sunday. And um, now that the state that I went to was my home state and the the show was located in where I used to live. So I was able to visit family and it was very um, comfortable. I knew the, the roads, I knew where I was and, you know, all that stuff. So it, it still was, it was uh, a huge trying to pack up the car for a show and for the weekend, it, you know, that was a, that was a huge, you know, and you if you forget something, you're two States away, there's not much you can do. <laughs> right. I, I know when I go to my two day, uh fairs around here one of them i'm just eight minutes away from home and the other one maybe 20 minutes so so if i mm -hmm. forgot something i could go get it i was okay. able to meet uh suzy 007 in person yes she oh came God. by and surprised me and yes it was wonderful wonderful i also saw lark kemper i got to meet lark kemper and suzy 007 and i was 
just thrilled that they came by to see me. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's really, it means so much. And I'm, I'm letting you know, there was no, like, it felt like we didn't skip a beat. It, it felt like, you know, how we know each other here. There wasn't any strangeness. I was like, ah, come here. I <laughs> gave everybody a big hug. And I'm like, you're here. Thank God. Somebody that knows me is here. You know, um, it was fun. It was lots of fun. Oh, that How is- nice. And especially for it being out of town and, you know, my, you might've been feeling a little bit like there weren't as many people around who knew you and, and all that. That was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I love it when I go to fairs and get to meet people. I've got to meet three people in the audience before in person, uh, Wiki, Amanda Carroll and uh, Hypnicity. So, I and I just I just love it and it, it's just like you said that like like I've known them all my life and it's just it's so much fun so yeah. much fun well let's say hi to some of the more people that have come in honey n thanks for putting up your question and t barb she, she's in gonna she just came in she's probably already gone but thanks t barb for stopping by mcgrill well, ladies, um, I just want to let everybody in the audience know that we don't, uh, you know, if you want to put in your question, put in your question. Um, I would, I just personally would prefer that it's not like, how's my week going to go? How's my month going to go? Those are not that exciting. Give us something exciting. Like, tell me about my dragon. <laughs> you know, <or> <laughs> <like that. laughs> well, um, I have a dragon show with um, with uh, Ginger Faye, uh, Ginger Faye Tarot and I, we did a dragon series. And on the fourth installment of our dragon show, we did readings from your dragon. And I, you know, went like this and I said, what does your dragon, well, tell me what your dragon wants you to know. And it was absolutely fascinating. There was one that made me cry. There was one that made me cry and each one like just opened my heart chakra more and more and more. And you guys, they're real. I never, ever knew so many different dragons were there. I saw like an angelic dragon, one that was like pearlescent white and they were kind of like misty and like really moving around and just, just like very uh, ethereal or like an angel would be like, but it was white and, and uh, pearlescent and, but it was, it was very angelic and, and here it was um, high frequency or it's a frequency was her name. And I'm like, it's because it's such a high frequency. It was like in the ninth dimension that oh this God. dragon was there. And I was like, shut I'm like, N-. I thought dragons were like earthbound or earth realms, you know, different realms, but it was amazing. And I also saw another one that made me cry. I said, I see your dragon, your dragon, is stirring something in a, like a boiling cauldron. And I said, I think that you, your dragon does herbal. She's an herbal healer. She does herbal. I said, I see that there's um, lavender hanging upside down drying and sage hanging upside down drying. And the dragon had that tied between the trees while stirring this, this cauldron. And I said, she is this, this dragon of yours is, is a uh she does medicinal type of healing i'm like this dragon is a healer and i'm like you're you have a healer dra- you have a healer drag a dragon is a healer i was like it as it was coming out of my mouth i surprised this uh, you know the crap out of myself and i couldn't believe what i was seeing and i got so emotional i started tearing up and i had to like keep blinking my eyes and my whole chest like my throat got all funny and i had that that little feeling like i was just going to cry i'm like it was so, I was like, I was almost like relieved because this dragon said all of those potions, all of those indigenous salves and, and treatments and remedies are not lost. She says, I'm keeping them for you. Oh man. Wow. wow. That I, is- just, I just, I did. I just about cried. I said, I'm going to have to take a minute. I'm tearing up right now. It moved me. I, and I never thought I would ever see that or hear that, but in the, each one was so different for every person. And I did also, um, I got one for Susie 007. I found, I did one for her dragon and her dragon had like little reading glasses down on her nose. And she was like flipping through a book, 
but the book was the secrets of the universe. Everything mm -hmm. you'd ever want to know. The research, research, research. Wanted to know the secrets of the universe. Everything more than the Akashic records. I mean, more than the 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 metaverse. You know, I mean, just amazing. It was it was really just amazing. The different types of dragons that came through. All of them were so loving. One of them had lipstick and eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> Makeup dra oh, dragon. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, so, does everyone was, have dragon guides? I haven't found one that didn't yet, but I don't. Cool. I don't know if I could say that. I haven't tried. Yeah. But the yeah. the few. What it is is we did a dragon show, and we did a three part, four part series. So every week we were doing a different show, and be people were there in there saying, "Yes, I know this dragon," and I did like a montage. I had the you know the photos of all the different dragons and stuff that we did and we went through them and stuff we talked about the folklore we talked about the facts we talked about we talked about them so much so the last one was about you know so everybody that was in the chat was affiliated with dragons somewhat already you know mm -hmm. and people can find those shows on your channel jean it's on ginger phase right now i okay. do have the uh the the I, I do have the rerun coming out on my show um, in April. Okay. Cool. It's fascinating. I, it's um, we have some questions. Cool. And yes, let's get to work. What you've yeah. been talking about has inspired some people to ask about their dragons. Um, I just want to let everyone know, I am always so amazed at all the interesting spiritual things were shown. That they... they blow our minds all the time to show us things to show that we have a much larger spiritual team than we ever thought. I, I feel like I got a big crowd now, a big crowd around me helping me. So are you ready? As I'll ever be. Okay, here we go. Let's actually go with a dragon question. So Denise McMillan, Terry. Can I please know about my dragon? Please and thank you. Blessings to all of you and the people in this audience. So, so let's see. Let's tune in and talk to Denise Milliken's dragon or spirit team and see if there's a dragon on it. Whichever way you want to go. Well, this is interesting. I've never really tuned into dragons before, but Denise, when I tune into your dragon, I see it um, kind of multi-dimensional. It can be, uh, they're showing me th two, th three things. The first one is it can be a real spitfire and sort of a protector. And if you find yourself in situations where you kind of have a sharp tongue sometime, that's your dragon. And then I see it turning over on its back and kind of like, you know, like when you're rubbing a Labrador's belly or something like that, just being a, just being so playful and loving and uh, not the spitfire at all. And then I see you riding on its back with reins on. So it's, it's all of these things. And I think the message is that you've got the power, but you need to kind of keep it under control and, and harness it. And use it, use it that that strength, that protection, that you know those words that can cut to the quick when you need them are very important tools to have, but not to just let it go wild because it might start the world on fire. Wow, that's that's really cool. I know it's beautiful. Do you have anything, Jean? Not yet, but go ahead, Terry. You okay. can go. So I um uh, try tried to tune into you and tried to tune into your dragon and right away um, a dragon I know already ap appeared and one time I was going on a um, spiritual journey and uh, they always give me inst really interesting transportation and they gave me a dragon to ride and very dark green very green uh, it, it had like fins on the top and everybody who was going on this journey with me was invited to sit on it and hold on to the fin in front and um 
I can't tell exactly if this is your dragon or if they're just saying, okay, it is your dragon. Um, because they can do multiple things, just like an angel. And uh, I get the feeling that this dragon is um, to help transport you through that imagination portal, to help you really tap into your um, spiritual side, to let, to imagine what you might think of as a big green dragon and allow that to transport you to uh, knowledge about yourself. So I, I, what I'm, I'm, I'm talking all over the place here, but what I think is this is a dragon you can use for meditation. So. Um, so Denise, what I was getting for you is that I saw that there was these wooden discs, like little round discs that were sort of like this thick and in on the side of the, of the discs where the bark would be uh, of the, of the tree the, of this wooden disc is little carved out hearts, little carved out hearts. So I feel as though your dragon has um, very whimsical and creative and um, almost like art. What do you call the crafty, crafty, a crafty um, uh, dragon. I also see that this dragon is very grounding for you. I, um, and yet, you know, this dragon is there for you. It's very versatile, just like Joan and, and Joan was talking about many different things. And, and I felt that um, it's very versatile because I also saw you in the stars. It's almost like when you astral travel, your dragon's there with you. It's almost like your power animal. Um, but when you're here on Earth, it helps you with uh, creativity and, and arts and crafts and, and um, just beautiful grounding energy as well but um but she's very creative yeah cool wow. thank you so much for that question and how interesting um let's see let's uh let's actually stay with this and do another dragon uh because we're already we're thinking about the dragons so Tina Maxi uh, says, hi there, ladies. I'm very curious about my dragon. May I have a read? Thank you. So let's see about Tina Maxi's dragon. So I see your dragon, uh, Tina, traveling with you as almost like a co-pilot. I see your dragon as like your best friend. And I see your dragon almost like the same height as you. Almost like the same, like, I like guess it's, it's a miniature dragon, but it, either that or you're as big as the dragon. Um, but you're almost like pals and you're almost partners. And I see you in a cockpit and I see that you are, he's your co-pilot and I feel like he's really smart and he knows uh, sort of like history. And when I say history, I mean like lifetimes and he's able to transport you through time. I think he's a time traveler. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm laughing because I can't believe what's coming out of my mouth. I, it's coming out of my mouth and it's startling. I mean, it's surprising to me too. Oh my gosh. Oh. Um, Joan, are you ready? Yeah. I When I tuned into you, Tina, I saw first a kind of a traditional dragon coming out, but it, it, it was carrying a sword in one hand and I don't know what it was in the other. But then he dropped these things and he just put his, his or her hands to his mouth and started calling out. And and the they weren't words, but it was tones, and it was it was making I don't know if it was quite music, but they was calling out, communicating, uh, and trying to bring things in, sort of like you know a dog can hear vibrations that other, that people can't. It was that kind of thing because I didn't really hear the tones, but it was it was about communication. And um, what did I write down? Drop the sword. 
have a special tone and of communication or music um, and communicating with the unseen. So maybe your dragon is uh, someone that you can call on if you wanted to tune into the other side or tune into beings that that you know, like we can't hear what dogs hear. If you want to, your dragon can help you hear things that that we humans don't normally hear. Oh my like communication dragon! That is so <laughs> cool. That is so cool. And I'm just, I'm kind of like, I saw. So on my stage, I have like a little cave. And that's when your spirit, spirit animals, sometimes you're given a spirit animal. And so I actually saw this come out of the cave now. So it's like as if this is kind of a, a newish thing, like just by asking the question, you are suddenly gifted one, a dragon. I saw you hold your hand out like this and the little dragon perched. It's just a little dragon. It's just little. And it's just perched on your, your finger. And it kind of had like blues and purples and, and creamy white behind it. And um, and I looked at the dragon and I'm like, in my head, just a tiny bit was like, oh, that's tiny, that's little, maybe that's not very powerful. And the dragon, they, they hate it when I do that, they hate it. I mean, all of the spirit animals hate it if I underestimate them. He immediately moved my vision right in, like I'm looking eye to eye with this dragon. And I'm like, he, he's like, oh, don't count me out. Don't, you know, basically let him know how powerful that he was. And what he showed me is that this dragon can um, burn with his breath. It can burn away deception. That when you're in the midst and you're talking to someone and you think there's deception, you can just call upon this little dragon. And he just said his name's Fred. You can say, Fred, could you clear this up? And he'll like breathe out his little fire and kind of clear, help you see the way, help you hear the way, the right thing. I don't I don't know what your um, clairs are, but however you perceive that it, it's gonna help clear up some of this. So so what a what a wonderful companion to have. And the I, I'm still I'm also blown away by the fact that this dragon can raise your vibrations or does is there something with the frequency there that Joan had? Wow, wow. So in, enjoy Fred. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And it sounded like sonar almost when you said put his hands up and yelled and nothing came out. Or I was almost hearing like the the Tarzan yell. Oh, you know. <laughs> wow. But maybe in a silent tone. But how that frequency thing is just amazing. Just amazing. Yeah. And I've seen yeah. these. I don't have my 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 dragon uh montage set up or else I would play it. They're all over the place. I put them all back in their respective folders. So <laughs> <laughs> it would take me too long to get it together. But oh my gosh, that's amazing. I'm telling wow. you, you guys, these these dragons are real. They are the real thing, the real deal. I've never seen anything more real in all my life. And it's so beautiful that they're opening up and coming and helping us. And they are in a form of spirit guides. They are in the form of angels. They're, they are in the form of all the different realms. And they are uh, our best friends. And they are also part of us. It's like there's a part of us who is them as well. It, it's just amazing. It's amazing. It is. I am. So and when I think about about when I first thought it had the sword and another weapon that it dropped, and then it was the tone. So maybe it's like helping you advance of helping us all understand the battle isn't the way to do it. There's there's other ways, a higher vibe way to resolve things or communicate. That's right. thank you. Brilliant, Joan. That's brilliant. So yeah. she says, a little dragon friend. How lovely. Oh my, thank you. Well, this is so helpful. This will assist me. This all will assist me. Yeah. They are. They're extremely helpful. They are. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Wow. Yeah, thank you for letting us read on that. That was fun. Um, let's uh, change gears a little bit here. And um, Honey Ann would like to ask, uh, may I ask now about my future relationship with MJ? What's it going to be like? I am quite annoyed with her right now. 
so now we can't look at your uh, we can't look at mj but we can look at you and uh your your vibrations and how how that might go so and sunny just go ahead and, i mean sunny honey just oh. go ahead and say hello if you don't mind just say hi yeah just to make sure so um after honey it's going to be mcgrill so mcgrill uh just go ahead hi. and um say hi so we know you're here and Amea Karuna, Reiki Master, you're you will be after that. So if all of you would say hi, then we'll know if you're here right now. Cause it, it sometimes uh is really we can get some good feedback from you sometimes or or if we have questions. And if maybe we can come back if if not, but we like to take the ones who are here. Yeah. Um, so let's we'll just see. Oh, my grill's here. Good. Okay. Uh, let, let's actually switch to McGrill because we haven't heard from Honey. Oh, okay. Um, we'll, we'll keep I'm it sorry. going. She, she'll come back. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep her. Well, we'll, we'll keep her here. But, uh, sorry, Joan, you probably were already tapped in. And ready. <laughs> well, I, I was getting something, but I couldn't figure out what it meant. Okay. okay McGrill. Let's go to McGrill. Uh, does my Aunt Beverly... Uh, who's also a spirit guide, have a message for this week. So I'm just hearing her say that she wants you to communicate with her one-on-one -on -one and um, ask her to um, sort of um, give you validation. Um, like. Um, uh, make me laugh, get, send me something funny, help me pick out what to wear, help me uh, choose what to make for breakfast and um, set her a place at the table, uh, buy her a little gift, put her picture in a very prominent spot and say hello to her each day. She wants you to know that she's not very far and that she's not somewhere off in another faraway land. She's right here. She's right here. She's always by your side. And she is um, very dedicated to your like your soul's path and you um you uh and making it easing easing the path for you. How about you ladies? She uh as soon as I tuned in she was like this tapping the watch and saying um and then I said, well, show me something else. And I saw footprints and she said, make tracks. So it's all about, she's like on your case that she wants you to the, make the most of each moment. And then she said, it's not even, I guess it's more like be mindful of each moment. So she doesn't need you to like be checking off things off a list constantly, but even if the uh, making the most of each moment, if that moment is relaxing, say, okay, now I'm going to just relax up to, till, you know, for an hour or something like that, or whatever it is. Uh, but to just be mindful of each moment, because she may have, she may be referring to herself in, in body that maybe she wish she would have done more or wish she would have uh, understood how precious our days are and that, and that there are only so many of them. Um, so that was what I was getting. And it may have been not so much about you or she, I don't think it's criticism of you. I think it's just a reminder to, to all of us that, um, to be present and, and, uh, purposeful with our lives and with the, the time we have here. I hope that's somewhat helpful. Okay. Uh, McGrill and Beverly, I think a harder time bringing her in, um, but she she definitely is thrilled to be on your team. At one point, I thought she was maybe telling me, uh, I I I might know more about you than you really want me to know. This might be a kind of a two personal relationship, uh, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So. What I'm getting from that then is that if that as you work with her, because I feel like she's really this week going to bring your attention to little, little, um, 
miracles in your life, little, little, little miracles that before you may have gone completely unnoticed that she's really going to bring your attention to these things. And if it gets too much, just let her know Let it, you know, like maybe, maybe let's, let's, uh, maybe something like, um, I go to bed at eight o'clock. Let's not talk after that until six in the morning or something, you know, set a little bit of boundaries if you have to, but she definitely, this is going to be bringing your attention to these little things that you may, that may have nor normally gone unnoticed. So pay attention. Okay. Thank you, McGrill. Um, okay. So Let's go to Jay Roberts. Um, Jay Roberts asks, do you see me finding a long-term employment with good pay soon? That's a, that's, that's a good question for my pendulum. Actually, I'm going to check a moment. Oh, I just have to back up a second here. I know you're all working on this, but McGrill said Beverly was murdered when I was very young. So I understand life is short. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's, that's rough. Uh, no, J. Roberts, sorry. Okay. I get yes. And then I asked when, and uh, I asked by quarter, and we're almost to the end of the first quarter. So it wasn't first quarter, January, February, March. Uh, and second quarter, it was iffy. And then third quarter, um, yes. So I said, well, how about, okay, January, March, April, May, June. Um, and, and definitely by June, then I started to back up. Well, how about the end of May? So the, I'm thinking about the end of May or June is when, when we'll be seeing something. But um, I was definitely getting yes about getting long-term um, employment and with good pay. I saw them, you know, with the dollar bill, the, the bills, kind of counting them out. So check back with us and let us know. How about you, Jean? I already got it before you said it, just so everybody knows. But I, too, got July 24. You'll be in a job um, that's you'll have either changed jobs or got a different something about a different job around July 24, which Joan just said the end of June. <laughs> but I got I asked if, he, if it will be for more money and it said not right away, but there's potential for more money. And I said, how much will she be getting? Uh, how much increase? And I went through like 5 percent, 10 percent. And it said at least a 5 percent increase. Like you'll start. And if, I don't know if it's like a bonus structure that you'll eventually earn more money or if it's the new position. Like once you do like six to nine months at this position, then you have a potential of moving and doing more and, and uh, earning more potential. So. It may not be more when you first move, but the potential and the uh, advancement is all right there. That That is all you. Yeah, I, I I got yes too. I got it that it's a very strong yes. Not not just a, like a little movement, a very strong yes. And then again, for that June, July time frame, a very strong yes. So I Great. think that you you will. So that's good. Thank you for your question. That is, it's always fun to, let's see. Yeah. Did Honey N ever show up? Did anyone notice? I didn't see her. I didn't see her either. Okay, but uh, Maya is here. So let's go to Maya's question. 
Okay. Hi, y'all. Can you please let me know if I have a dragon? Okay. I automatically saw a wizard dragon, and this wizard dragon had on a big cape or robe that had the big giant sleeves and a, you know, like that uh, Merlin's hat. Uh, and he's dressed this way to show me I'm a wizard. Like you can see that I'm dressed this way because I'm a wizard. And he is uh, very much a wizard of energy and uh, he, he's just saying that he uh, creates, he, he helps to create things like almost like uh, making wishes come true. And um he helps to uh, um, he helps you with your manifestation. That's what he's telling me. Gene, that's so fun because I got the same thing in a very different way. <laughs> when I tuned in, I got um, it was a dragon that was dressed up, but in two different ways. I first saw him with, you know, the the artist beret and the white and black striped shirt that you you know are kind of symbols for a French artist painting on an easel, and then it switched to him wearing, I'd been on a ship with a captain's hat. So it's creativity and leadership. I like your, that dragon, that uh, guide for you is helping you with your creativity and being a leader in that field, whether that means teaching or kind of being a, the way shower or a trendsetter or like, Yes, it's chart your own course, go your own way in your creativity. You don't have to just paint by numbers and do what other people do. This influence is going to help you find your own creative expression that's unique to you. Oh, my gosh. I got the same thing a different way. <laughs> I love this. So I saw her on her on my stage, and the dragon was under her. Her feet were on the dragon but the dragon had levitated her. So vibration, frequency, and, and she guides it, but the dragon provides some of the, the propulsion. So Perfect. again, to me, the same thing, uh, the ability to uh, manifest, move things, go, go in a path and to sense things. So I think this dragon, man, probably really helps you sense things and really know things on, uh, spiritually. But it probably helps you day to day too. So yeah. Well, cool. thank you ladies. Oh my she gosh. Said, wow, that's awesome. It, things definitely manifest quickly for me. That's what she says. Wow, good. Mm -hmm. That is great. And Jay Roberts just wanted to follow up and she says, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is great news. I needed that. So for her job or for their job. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank um, you for that feedback, everyone. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Let's see. Oh, now here's, here's a really, this is going to be a lot of fun. Craig Dixon, our friend Craig. He wants to know about his dragon. And, uh, you know, he his very strong spiritual pal is Clara Bow. And uh, he says, if she's like Clara, I'm not worried about anything. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay. Let's, let's, let's tap in and see about that. And he says, I'm here. Thank you, Craig. We appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. So I see this uh, this dragon of yours uh, dressed up in like a cowboy uh, hat and a vest and almost like a star on his chest. He's very much like uh, the sheriff and he wants to make sure that, that rules are followed and that people stay in line. I feel as though there is some sort of a law in order or um, some sort of a managerial or a... Um, keeping things in line. And he's saying that um, it's it's so that you don't have to. He's saying that 
uh, he'll, he'll, he does these things for you so that you don't have to, it's almost like, uh, you feel as though that you, you know, people who don't follow rules, it's, it's, you feel the need to tell them you should be following the rules, but he's your dragon is saying that, let me do that. I'm the law here. I'm the one who's uh, taking care of these others who are not following the rules or the laws and that it's, it's okay for you to just relax and, and sort of focus on what makes you happy and don't worry about um, following laws. That's what I'm getting. And cowboy hat and a vest with a star. I was seeing, um, well, first, and maybe this is because I know a little bit about you, Craig, but I saw a dragon driving up in an old Model T or an old car. It was blue, um, but open top and everything, and got out, and he was wearing these massive big um, court shoes, like tennis shoes or basketball shoes, and then clomp, 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 walking over and starting to play basketball. What do I make of this? And, uh, and so I think it's a foot in both worlds that you're I know it, it kind of in the past and living and understanding both of what we call the past here, but also in the spirit realm with Clara, but also kind of what Jean was referring to about playing by the rules that the dragon is there to kind of help. Maybe I didn't see the ref shirt on it, but it was like it was kind of playing by the playing the game by its own rules somehow. Um, how does this relate to Craig? Can you summarize this a little bit more? It's like it's giving you um, the thumbs up to live the life that you're living your own way. That it uh, that there you have your own set of rules of not to uh, be held by other people's expectations. That we you know we have to to live. 100% in this physical universe and and not listen to other influences but there's there are some guidance that this dragon can give you to kind of stay on the court <laughs> if that makes any sense wow. wow that's fabulous well i saw something kind of in between both of you i i first saw craig sitting on his couch and then as I looked at, around a bit, then there's Clara sitting nearby too. And then it seems like I started to rise, rise, right? I just kept going up and I, I was looking down on them. And then my, as I'm looking down, then my body starts to swivel. I'm, I'm going in a circle above them looking. And then the dragon pulls me out even farther. And now I'm looking at his house and then I'm looking at land around his house and then I'm kind of looking at his neighborhood a bit you know the things around him and as I'm going around like I'm just going around in this big circle I'm like what what do you mean by this what what do you do dragon protection that mm. you live by your rules in this space and this dragon provides protection so that you may do that. And um, I think that's just lovely. I just see how protective this dragon is and that it's it's not just that it's there, it's putting out this frequency vibration, kind of a bubble around your property to keep you safe, to keep you, um, so you have the ability to, um, live without too much discomfort without people trying to bother you yeah that, that was beautiful that. that was really really beautiful and and i agree i feel that from the sheriff you're right it, it feels like more like just just to put you at ease craig so that you can live your life and have fun and not worry you don't that, like it's all taken care of you know this is what i felt it was it was really beautiful ladies oh my gosh yeah yeah. Um, yeah, that's that. It, to me, it almost mirrors some of what, you know, what we've seen in the past from Clara, too, that she's a little protective as well. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so 
let's, um, I'm going to thank you, Craig, for asking the question. And he says he's going on an airplane ride soon, and he'll let Clara know. Um, I just want to jump over here to Wiki real quick. Uh, oh, and look at Wiki's little dog. Um, a while back, she was asked to envision her dragon. Um, she says, I saw a green dragon that lived on a cave in the coast. Was I close or delusional? Okay. Well, I didn't realize this is a question, but let's 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 dive in and see if she was close or delusional. When I tune in, I see a prism. And that just as all of us are reading on the same person's dragon and seeing different things, there's, we're kind of like a facet in the prism and that energy can be expressed in different ways. So if that's what you saw, that wasn't delusional, that's what you saw and that was true. And if somebody else tuned into your dragon, they might not see the same thing. At least that's what I'm getting. Oh, I love that. I just got a simple, you're, you're not delusional. That That's it. That's all I got. A very, very simple. Just, yep, that's your dragon. I got a, a yes, absolutely, for sure. And uh, to trust and to... Um, give them the benefit of the doubt. What, you know, what does it hurt? Just give them the benefit of the doubt. The more that we can trust, the more that we'll be receiving and, and listening and communicating. And um, they want, they want you to trust yourself. And I've got a 100%. I kept saying, was it her imagination? Was it, was it that, was it a dream? Was she there? Was she one of the dragons there with them? No. Did she see her dragon? And yes, yes, yes. So every time I asked it all different questions to validate it every which way. And what you saw was, was your dragon in the cave. It wasn't you. It wasn't somebody else. It wasn't a, an illusion. It was definitely your dragon showing themselves to you, and to and to um, to trust that. Oh, that's lovely. Um, she said, "Very cool, Joan." And that is very cool. And uh, yes, trust is a test for me. Yeah. So that's so cool. That's really lovely. Thank you, Wiki, for asking your question. Um, let's see here. We'll go to so, Melody oh. has to run. Thanks for letting us know, Melody. We'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you. Is, uh, let's see here. Who do we have? I'm still waiting on Honey Ann. Honey Ann, if you're around, say hi. So we know if you're here. Um, a light worker. I've been seeing you in the, uh, in the chat. So I'm pretty sure you're here. Um, let me just look back real quick. Okay, so a light worker, please say hi if you're here, and we're gonna move on though to uh, she's here, she's here, she's here. Oh, good, okay, great, thank you, light worker, for replying so quickly. Okay, so her question is, What can you tell me about my spirit animal? Thank you. I'm getting a zebra. And to me, the zebra is um, kind of a symbol for someone who is both an individual and part of the herd. Like they have very good uh, hearing and sense of smell and eyes on the side of their head to keep, keep a lookout for predators. And they can move as part of the group and, and work within the group to 
to protect the young and to protect each other. But also if they're threatened, they've got sharp hooves to cook, kick with and sharp teeth to bite with. Uh, so there, it's about both being an individual and a member of the group, working within a group really well for the benefit of all. But when you have to step out on your own to protect your, yourself or others, you've got the tools to do that too. And, that, and your zebra spirit animal can help. Plus they're just so very stylish and gorgeous. <laughs> yes. Jean, do you uh, do you have anything? I was I was actually getting some validation. I did see a, an owl for you, a light worker, and I saw a very large owl. So I I had to look up what the largest owl was, but it does seem to be um, sort of like maybe between two and three feet tall. Um, I don't know. I'm seeing something that has a large owl that is that is that tall. And it's in my, and I can't find out where I saw that or what references from it. Um, is there something like uh, that went in extinct and is now back in, um, there is something that I'm, I'm trying to, I don't have all the information yet, but that they're showing me that it's a very large owl. It's obscure and possibly extinct. But I, when I, when I wrote those words down that I was hearing, I felt like, well, I thought I heard about this owl that is no longer extinct. Like it, like there's more of them that they didn't know about, or maybe it was like in history or something. But it was this really large owl, and I feel as though. Uh, this is the power, the power and and um, a wisdom, of course, but it was more like the power of um, your domain. It was the power of uh, being noticed and being a part of the community. Like uh, it's not an owl that would like blend into the trees and, and hide away. And it was very much a, um, a leader and a respected uh, member of the of the community. So. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I got something a completely another animal too. <laughs> and uh I had to check in because it was it was it was like, huh, really? Really? Um it's a little black cat. A little black cat. And I'm like, oh, what are you doing, little black cat? And she's uh, I said, you know, that that seems a little on the nose here like a little bit you know like like a witch's familiar kind of and i'm like hmm and they said well you can think of me like that if you want i don't mind at all they said um a light worker she is magical and i help her with that magic and um then she showed me that in sometimes a little you a little magic happens in your life like you you wish for something maybe something minor and suddenly you walk in the other room and there it is at your fingertips and they're like that is a little bit of magic and that is the little bit of magic that that i do for her so that's what i got a little black cat and um yeah and Look what she said. She said, my first cat was a black cat, the sweetest cat. Well, I did ask the cat, do, do, does she know you? Like, has this, is this cat been a cat for her? And it did not say yes to that. But anyway, there we go. Jean, I wonder if your owl was the Eurasian fish owl. Like, remember uh, Flacco, the the a uh, big owl that escaped from the Manhattan Zoo and it had been living on its own throughout Manhattan until just about a month ago when it when oh, wow. it got hit by a car. But it was, people were wondering, is it going to survive on its own? It, it found plenty of mice and rats and things to eat and just fascinated everybody by how it went, you know, it just decided to be a, a city dweller in Manhattan and did very well, thank you. So it was, wow. it was pretty amazing, yeah. Okay, yeah, that, yeah, I, I can't wait to Google that afterwards to see if- I know. I'm trying to figure right. it out. <laughs> we'll have KK here. 
uh, KK says, on Saturday, I had lots of cloud activity. First, I saw my dog, Cowboy, who passed on a couple years ago. And then I saw all sorts of puppy faces that I that weren't my pets. Are, are, are there any messages from the clouds and pops? Well, I, I think that you're psychic, KK, and I think that you're an animal communicator. And I think these are uh, pets from uh, that have crossed over that are coming into your awareness, into your um, sort of awareness is the best word I could say. And um, you're seeing them outside. It's a, more of an um, objective uh, type of vision that you're seeing. And these are real pups and these are real uh, spirits from the other side showing themselves to you and uh, some people see them subjectively and get messages like in their inner eye vision so uh, you're uh, we know that you're an animal communicator we know that you have psychic skills and we're just waiting for you to um, put hang that shingle but yeah you're, you're that's that's mediumship you're seeing souls of of uh, of pets that have passed over showing themselves to you through clouds. And this is a lot of our loved ones and spirit guides can show us different things objectively in, in our real world that we're, like in a, in some suds in the sink. And you're like, what? Or like when you pour the syrup on the pancake, you're like, what? He's looking, you know, it's, it's all different. It's all miraculous things, but this is what I'm, I'm seeing. I don't know about the pups, um, but I think that they're random. I get these, I get these random puppies that like act like they're really cute and they, they're like standing up on two legs, dancing and smiling at me. And I'm like, what is this puppy? Or I get like a little puppy that's trying to give me the sad eyes or I see a cat that's like struck. And, and I'm telling you, I'm just like randomly walking around and these pets come in because they know they see my light. They know I have mediumship and they know that I can see the, the, the pets on the other side. And this is just them coming and greeting you. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. What I was getting was the, the love vibe of not only of adult dogs, but, you know, puppies. What could be, what could be more loving and, and just bring out your heart more than that? And I think, to my mind, that was the message that was like confirmation that you're getting what you're getting because you are on the right frequency. And that's the frequency of love, which is the frequency of puppies. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean oh, to be muted there. there. I, uh, my husband is working on his car outside and he's got some racket going. <laughs> it was very loud and I thought I better calm that down. So when I tuned into that, I got that you're also on, I, I got the same thing. You're on that frequency of love. Um, but the, the only other thing I got was that possibly um your heart is ready for another dog in your life that there's that that's a possibility that they are that some of these other dogs you're seeing are potential dogs that you might adopt someday so i don't know i don't feel any pressure on that like i'm not feeling like oh you got to go find me and adopt me um i'm not feeling that but i'm feeling that that they're there just letting you know that your heart is ready so okay thank you so much for that question illumination portal said puppy love and i didn't say it but i kept hearing that song also yeah hi val so nice to see yeah. you i'm going to be on with val later on tonight talking about the uh the the full moon and the lunar eclipse and we're going to be on with Diana Bowles and Valerie from Illumination Portal and and myself and I'm uh I'm there learning <laughs> so yeah. it's going to be fun later on tonight at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Eastern cool um I'm KK gave a little feedback she was hoping that was the case or uh that she is or Key, I'm sorry. She, uh, so ready to leap into an in animal communication, but it seems like you're already pretty hooked up. So go ahead. Yeah. 
keep uh, looking at that. That's really great. Um, let's see. I thought I saw. She says, thank you so much. And, of course, Wiki jumped right on that. And they called it Puppy Love. <laughs> That's what I was hearing. Yeah. And uh, Valerie says, we love having you with us, Jean. Thanks, Val. Yes. I I absolutely love listening to Val because she's the only one for me that somehow makes uh, astrology knowable. I, I don't know why my mind just doesn't want to grasp it, but with her, I can grasp it. So that's cool. Um, let's see. Uh, we just have a little quick message from Priscilla of the Crone Zone. Lunar Eclipse blessings, lovely ladies, <laughs> and everybody in the chat. Um, hey, Priscilla. Yeah. Nice to see you. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, I hope hope you had a good uh, lunar eclipse. Okay, let's see here. And we are at an hour, uh, Terry, just so you know. Okay, so actually we're at an hour. And we actually have gone through all the questions because Good. Honey Inn is not here. So yeah. we have them all done. So thank you, ladies. Thank you for um, staying with me and answering all these questions and uh, helping, helping everybody. Let's see. Well, well, this has been so much fun. And thanks to everybody in the chat and for Terry and Jean for introducing the concept of dragons. So we got to read about dragons. And for me, that was the first time. And it was just a real kick. Thank you. Oh, that was your first time? You seem like you were an old pro there, Joan. Well, I just ask about dragons. And, you know, it, it's like changing the channel and they start coming in. <laughs> I mean, you you had dragons changing clothes for you. Outfits. Just so you were I would have thought you were old hand on dragons. <laughs> that was fun. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Joan and Jean, for being here today. Uh, Joan, where can people catch you next? I think that I will probably be um, next Monday right here. I am oh. which, whichever one of us is hosting on Monday. So, yeah. Great. I think we have Wisdom Circle next week is oh, okay. uh, on, on the Crone Zone. And it's the 1st of uh, April. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my and word. Where Jean, did March go? <laughs> I know March just disappeared. Jean, I know you're going to be helping me tomorrow with the Akashic Healing Series. But you're also going to be on what time on the east coast with uh val illumination portal tonight at 7 p.m eastern and it's 4 p.m uh pacific and okay. we're going to be doing the, the full moon yeah yeah okay well thank you everybody it's been a lovely show how about, and, how about um, you terry you're going to be here to monday and what about tomorrow tell everybody about tomorrow yes i'm going to be here tomorrow with and Jean's going to help me. We're going. I'm going to do the Akashic Healing series, and the focus tomorrow is jealousy. So uh, the Akashic Records Masters are asking us to focus on healing je jealousy. So that Fabulous. will be very interesting. And um, I know what it's about, but I don't know how they're going to go about healing it yet. They will tell me that tomorrow. So yeah, cool. so tune in then and uh work on healing jealousy so okay everybody thank you for coming thank you for uh asking your questions and letting us 